How to eat healthy to prevent cancer and maximize your health. Coming up. Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nesto from Attaboy Cowboy and on this channel we give you health and wealth tips to help you be more successful. Now I was on my way out to work and a really good friend of mine named Michelle called me who was recently diagnosed with stage 3 cancer about a year ago. So we had a really interesting conversation, she had a lot of questions and I thought why not stop and film real quick so I can kind of summarize this for someone else that might be going through the same issues or for someone that wants to prevent the same issues. Uh, Michelle's a really good healthcare practitioner. She's been practicing for like 20 years. She got diagnosed with stage three breast cancer about a year and a half ago. And to be honest, the outlook was really bleak. It was a really rare type of cancer. And fortunately, she's made it through the other end. And now she's trying to figure out how to prevent it from happening again. As many of you may know, you really don't ever recover from cancer. It goes into remission. So you're always at risk for it coming back again. Now oftentimes they can cut it out and it can be undetectable, but obviously whatever it was in your body that caused it to happen in the first place could happen again. So it's something you have to treat for the long term. Even when you don't have it, you want to prevent it from coming back again. So let me go over the 15 questions that we discussed today and I'll make it really brief just to kind of summarize, because some of this information is in some of my other videos. So the first question she asked me is, what are the different types of vegetarians? Because she's considering a vegetarian diet. Well, there's many. I could probably list like 20 or 30, but let's just go over the main ones. Basically, there's vegans, which don't eat any animal products. They don't eat dairy. They don't eat any kind of meats. They don't eat um, eggs. They just eat plants. That's it. Then there's vegetarians, which there's different types. There's ovo-lacto-vegetarians, which is what I am. I eat eggs and I eat dairy occasionally. Or those ovo or there's lacto-vegetarians that only eat dairy. Or ovo, they obviously only eat eggs. And then there's also pescatarians, people that only eat fish. And there's poyotarians, people that only eat chicken. And there's goes on and on and on. So those are the different types of vegetarians. And there's actually a new term called plant-based eating, which I'll go into more detail later on, but it's basically just foods that are alternatives to traditional foods like fake meats or fake dairy or stuff like that that are made out of plants. That's what that means. Question number two, how to get started being a vegetarian? What do you eat? Well, that's probably the most common question along with what type of vegetarian you should become. And I'll just tell you from my experience, I've been a vegetarian for 20, uh, 17 years and I've been teaching this to patients for probably longer than that, for about 20 years. But, you know, the most important thing is not to be restrictive. You want things to be easy, you want to enjoy your food, you want to enjoy your life. So, for me personally, I don't like to feel like I can't do something. Because if you feel like you can't do something, you're going to want to do it more. So I never tell myself, oh, I don't eat meat, or I don't tell people I don't eat meat, because that's not true. I do eat meat, and I could eat meat if I wanted to. I eat meat for most of my life. I just haven't had any in the last 17 years. Um, and there's probably been two or three times in the last 20 years where I ate something, and I was like, oh, I, you know, I had meat in it. I already finished it. So things like that are going to happen. It's not the end of the world. I don't rush to the bathroom and start vomiting or anything like that. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, meat is just another protein source that we could eat as humans. It's just that we're looking for optimal health. So I have a preference to not eat meat. Um, and when I have that type of mindset, it makes it much easier not to eat meat. Because I know if I really wanted to have a steak later today or a piece of KFC chicken, I could. Because I'm not telling myself, I can't, I can't. That just sounds really uh, negative. So people don't like that. So I always tell patients, just become a flexitarian. That type of mindset is probably the easiest to deal with. That's someone that mostly eats vegetarian, but occasionally, uh, I know patients that say they only eat meat when they go out to a party or something, or they go to a dinner. That's cool. You know, if you go out and someone wants you to eat a piece of chicken or a piece of beef and you feel like you want to eat it, 
then eat it. So you don't feel like you're not, you know, missing out on things. Now, I personally don't feel like I'm missing out because I like the way I feel, so I don't eat it. But again, everyone's different. So you kind of have to go with your, what your personality type is. And I recommend the patients to start off as a flexitarian. Limit the amount of meats you eat, chicken, pork, beef, fish, whatever, and just eat it whenever you feel like you really need to or it's a special occasion or something like that. And again, in terms of meats, which one's better? There aren't any that's better. They're all about the same. In fact, in my book, my healthcare, my weight loss book, I list uh, chicken is probably the worst meat you could eat, and then seafood number two, the worst, second worst meat, and then pork and beef. And you know the reasons are in the book, and I can explain if you have some questions about it down below. Now, what do you eat? Well, <laughs> eat all the same stuff you normally eat. Just look for substitutes for whatever it is you cook for the meat. So if you make meatball soup, buy veggie uh, meatballs or veggie ground beef or chicken and use that. If you use lasagna with crumbled meat, well use veggie crumbled meat. You can pretty much eat everything that you eat now on a vegetarian or a vegan diet. You just have to get substitutes. Question number three, what to eat instead of meats? Well. That's a common question because people are wondering, well, am I going to be protein deficient? This whole thing about protein is kind of new. It started in the 80s and most people eat way too much protein. So it actually does damage their body. And that's why we have so much, one of the reasons why we have so much cancer. But on average, when they study vegetarians versus people that eat meat as part of their regular diet, vegetarians tend to get 25% more protein in their diet than people that are not vegetarians. So not getting enough protein is not a real concern for vegetarians. It's something that's pretty easy to get. It's in pretty much everything. You could eat all fruits and vegetables, nuts, seeds, whatever it is you eat. They all have protein in them, bread, you name it. Now some of the things that I eat instead of meats, well, I eat a lot of beans. I eat uh, lima beans, kidney beans, black beans, pinto beans, uh, 16 bean soup, in fact, I want to show you this. Let me just take a picture. Let me put it close for the camera. All right. Oops. This is my 16 bean soup. I'm actually soaking it. I soak it overnight. It has 16 different types of seeds. And I let it soak in water so that it sprouts. That increases the protein content. It actually activates the enzymes in it. So it makes the beans much more nutritious. I basically just eat more beans, more tofu, more soy products um, instead of meats. Number f four, are fake meats good? Well, Michelle was asking me, you know, can I eat meat occasionally? Well, again, that's up to you. If you want to be a flexitarian or if you feel like you can't do without it, then eat it occasionally. Now, are fake meats good for you? Well, let me show you some of the fake meats I have in my refrigerator. I have Beyond Burgers. And then I have these crispy chicken patties. And both of them are really good. The, the taste is good. Now, are they good for you? No, they're not good for you. They're processed food. Any processed food is not good for you. But are they better than eating a real chicken, uh, breaded chicken sandwich or a real beef burger? Yes, they are better than that. So you really want to look at what's going to do the, the least damage to your body. And that would be plant-based burgers uh, and, and meats because they're easier to digest and they're less biological load for your body. So if you're feeling a craving for chicken or beef or pork or fish or whatever, and you really feel like you want to eat it, but you don't want to eat the real thing, then I think fake meats are really good for that. They fill that void that you might be feeling. And it's going to help you keep on track if you really want to stay on a plant-based or vegetarian diet. Question number five, are dairy products good? Well, no, they're not good for you. Most people are lactose intolerant because dairy products are for cows. They're for baby calves. They're not for humans. So humans are allergic to the lactose in it, to the sugar. Now, not everyone is going to show symptoms, but you are going to have Symptoms that you may not see overtly, but you're going to have decreased immune function. You're going to have allergies. You're going to have a lot of stuff. I know Michelle was telling me that she would eat 
cereal every morning with milk and for years she, as soon as she would eat it she'd have to go to the bathroom you know she'd go several times and she just thought wow the cereal's doing a number on me but then she figured out no it's the lactose because she said she ate it she drank it when it was younger and what I told her was when I was a kid my brother Bobby and I my older bro brother rest in peace we used to get a gallon of milk at every meal and we used to compete to see who could finish the gallon first so we used to split the, a gallon of milk at each meal. Can you imagine my mom having to buy that much milk? We drink about three gallons a day. Um, and I really liked milk. It was good. But I, I haven't drank milk in years and years. I don't know, probably 15, 20 years. I can't drink it anymore. If I get it, I get an upset stomach. I have a lot of issues. And these issues particularly happen as we age. Your body is less resilient and less flexible. So a lot of things that maybe you could do when you were younger, like drink all night and then go to work in the morning or go to school, you can't do as you age. Your body just isn't as strong anymore, not as resilient. It just doesn't bounce back the same. So you really have to adjust. You can't be rigid and do the same things when you were younger as you do when you're older. You have to kind of adjust your lifestyle to your aging. Now, what types of dairy are good? Well, I like yogurts, not the commercial ones like Yo Play and Danon and stuff like that that are full of sugar and have almost no bacteria in them. But I do like kefir, K-E-F-I-R, plain with no sugar in it. It's really good for you. It has a lot of bacteria. It has about 12 different strains in it. It's good for your microbiome for introducing healthy bacteria into your system. Um, Michelle was asking me, should she take probiotics? Yeah, you can take probiotics, but I'm not really a big fan of those because just because you're introducing healthy bacteria doesn't mean they're going to thrive in your system. Remember, they're microorganisms and they need food. If they don't have the food, they die. So I can take microbiotics to the, to the cows come home, but if there isn't the right diet for them, they're just going to go into your body and then die and it doesn't really give you much of a benefit. Bacteria like inulin or plant fiber that's found in fruits and vegetables. So if you really want to have a healthy microbiome, a healthy bacteria system in your body, you need to eat fruits and vegetables at every meal, every day. And having that steady flow of inulin and fiber in your body is going to provide a healthy and steady food source for that bacteria. So then you're going to grow colonies of that bacteria. It's going to help with your keeping your general health better. Now, if you eat on the flip side bad food, processed food or meats or stuff like that, then you grow the bad type of bacteria. And that's the type of bacteria that causes cancers, causes you to age, causes a lot of problems in your body, causes issues with your gastrointestinal system. So if you want to get rid of problems like that, you really have to starve that type of bacteria so that they die off and they're not living in your body causing you these problems. So it's actually a pretty easy thing, but it's not going to happen in one day. You have to eat the healthy food. They have to get used to having that steady food source. And they like to eat several times, just like you and I do. So if you're eating it every day, then they're going to thrive in your body. And you're going to grow them over the course of the next weeks and months. And then you're going to see the health benefits. So remember, it's not just a matter of taking a few probiotics or drinking some kefir in one day. That's not going to cut it going to help you for a little bit but not not in the long term question number seven are carbs bad i know right before michelle got diagnosed with cancer she was on a keto diet and again no carbs are not bad what are, what's bad is processed food so a lot of food is processed you know white breads cereals you name it and that processed food has a lot of chemicals in it and that causes a lot of issues with health now are carbs bad? No, we need carbohydrates, but you want good carbohydrates. So you want like oatmeal, you want fruits, you want veggies, you want whole grains, you want uh, beans. That has a lot of carbohydrates in it, but they have the fiber in them and they're easier for your body to absorb and it goes in your system slowly. Now, when you compare that to example, like white bread that's been processed, that's a simple carbohydrate. It's been broken down or a sugar or a sugary drink like a coca-cola you drink that that sugar is going to go right into your body it's going to shoot your insulin levels up you're going to gain weight you're going to have a lot of health problems it's going to cause a lot of inflammation so that's the difference between 
you know, good carbs and bad carbs. There isn't really any bad carbohydrates if you're eating whole foods, like whole fruits and vegetables, beans, grains, stuff like that. You're gonna, you need carbohydrates to function. It's good for your health. So if you're gonna eat bread, you wanna eat healthy bread. Something like this, like Ezekiel bread. It's made out of ground up spelt, millet, beans. It's made out of whole seeds, grains, not like the derivatives. Now, a lot of times when you eat like white bread, I'll just give you a quick rundown. They get wheat, it's kind of like a seed. They break the outside, that's called a germ, and they toss that out. That has all the vitamins in it. You get stuck with just the stuff in the middle, the gluten, the flour, the white stuff. And that's good, but it's good when you eat the whole thing, not just part of it. This, on the other hand, has the entire seed and it has different types of seeds that are ground up. So it has what's called the low glycemic index. When you eat this, you're, it's not going to convert into blood uh, sugar real quick. So it's not going to make your insulin level shoot up and cause issues with inflammation. Whereas if you eat processed breads like um, white bread, the opposite happens, causes a lot of inflammation. So yes, you could eat carbs. Yes, you could eat bread, but look at, don't look at convenience, look at health. Cause I had a patient tell me why well, I bought this bread and it started getting moldy in three days. Well, yeah, it got moldy cause it's natural. They don't put any preservatives in it. So they're like, oh, okay, well yeah, just keep it in the freezer. And when you need some or want to eat some, just pull it out, drop it in the, in the toaster or defrost it for the day so you can eat it. That's going to allow you to eat something good. Sure, it's going to take a little bit more work to maintain it because it's healthy, but it's going to have long-term benefits for your health. Question number eight, types of sugars to eat. Well, unfortunately, Michelle had mentioned to me that she was using Splenda every day, like twice a day for about the year or two before she got cancer. Um, about the only sugar I would recommend is stevia. That's about it. It's an herb and make sure you look at the label because a lot of them are mixed with all sorts of other artificial sugars which are not good for you. So just because it says stevia doesn't mean it's 100% stevia and that's what you want, 100% stevia. Don't get the stevia that's mixed with Splenda or maltodextrin or whatever, a bunch of other artificial sugars. Don't eat that stuff. You can eat sugar but just eat stevia now should you eat honey well honey's okay it's better than eating all you know processed sugars but it's not ideal all sugars cause inflammation so you pretty much want to avoid sugars in general if you want to eat sugar if you feel like you need a sugar fix get used to eating fruits dates stuff like that that's going to give you that sugar high but it's not going to be as extreme as eating something that's processed question number nine nuts well it's funny like Michelle was asking me about nuts and she asked me a question that oftentimes people will ask me. Can I eat nuts? Are they too fatty? Are they bad for my health? Well, you know, people don't really ask me that when they're eating Cheetos or eating <laughs> some of this other stuff. I love nuts. Nuts are good. Yes, they have good oils for you and good fats, but that also helps you to become satiated or to feel full. So I like to put nuts in most of the things I eat. When I make shakes, I'll put scoops of peanut butter. I'll use almonds. I'll use pumpkin seeds in my salad. I mean, nuts have a lot of minerals in them. They have protein. They're very good for you. So I totally recommend nuts. Do you have to worry about the fat in them? Not really. I think as long as you use small doses of it and all of whatever it is you want to eat in your breads or your oatmeal or whatever, I don't think it's something you really have to worry about. Sometimes people will say, well, what if I'm trying to lose weight? That's an old way of thinking. Fats are good for your brain and they're good for weight loss. They take a lot of energy to actually break down and get out of your body. So it's not the fats in the nuts. It's more the fats and like artificial foods and stuff that you have to worry about. Palm oils, vegetable oils, all that kind of stuff. Those are the fats and the oils you want to avoid. Not necessarily the good fats and nuts. One more thing about nuts is make sure that whatever types of nuts you like or that you eat, don't buy roasted and salted. That destroys the oils in them. So it makes them almost, almost worthless. They're still good, but ideally just buy them raw. raw. Raw almonds, raw pumpkin seeds, raw walnuts, whatever it is you eat. Trail mixes with raw nuts. Don't buy the roasted ones. 
Question number 10, do you need to take supplements? Now that's the question I always get is there's that fear of not getting enough. They feel like they're not going to be healthy enough. Um, I was talking to my friend Tatiana in Colombia uh, recently and she just recently became a vegetarian. She told me she went to Colombia, she was talking to her dermatologist and a few other people and they were telling her, hey, you need to stop eating like that. You're going to have long-term health problems because you're not eating meat. So I asked her, well, what type of health problems exactly are they talking about? Um, the fact is, there is no research that supports that. But there's plenty of research that shows that eating a vegetarian diet is going to have long-term benefits for your health. So again, just because you're a doctor or a lawyer or whatever your expertise is, doesn't mean you're an expert in everything. You need to actively seek out information. I have a lot of friends that are doctors that are really good doctors, but they don't know much about nutrition because they don't teach us that in school. They teach whatever it is your specialty is. My specialty is naturopathic medicine. I happen to have three different uh, credentials that I studied in, in nutrition. And I also live in this world. I love nutrition. It's one of my passions. So I actively read almost on a daily basis about foods and nutrition and stuff like that. So again, just because someone is your general practitioner or your oncologist or whatever, does not make them an expert in nutrition. You need to actively seek out that information. On Tatiana's case, I provided her with information so she could read. She can get herself educated on what the facts are and what would happen to you if you eat a plant-based diet. Now back to the question, do you need supplements? No, as long as you're eating a balanced uh, variety of fruits and vegetables and nuts and grains, you don't need to take any supplements. Now, do I recommend supplements? In general, I like supplements. I'm a fan of supplements for anybody, whether you eat meat or not. But just because you're becoming a vegetarian, no, you do not need to take supplements. You're going to probably get the best nutrition you've ever had in your life eating as a vegetarian. As I mentioned before, vegetarians tend to get 25% more protein in their body than people that, do not, that eat meats. And in general, because of the fact you're eating more seeds and nuts and beans and all this variety of nutritious whole food, whole food means food that is not processed, you're going to have a lot more higher nutritional index. You're going to get a lot more vitamins and minerals in your diet. So if you're eating vegetarian, you actually will not need as many supplements as someone that does not eat vegetarian. Question number 11, what is plant-based eating and what is like clean eating? Well, plant-based eating actually is a result of a lawsuit. So you used to find like veggie burgers and chicken burgers and stuff like that. This used to say like hamburger on it. But now this says Beyond Burger plant-based patties. Or in the case of the chicken, you notice it says chicken patties, C-H-I-K-N patties. That's because the meat industry started noticing that plant-based foods were eating away at their market share. So they got nervous. They said, hey, we don't want people thinking this is chicken. So they sued and they won. So these companies have to put plant-based on their packages and they have to take out the word chicken. They have to put alternatives, you know, they have to spell it like C-H-I-K-N, etc. for pork and for fish, etc. as a result of a lawsuit. That's all it is. So plant-based just basically helps people understand that there are no animal products in there and it's actually a, a faux or a fake form of that chicken or beef. That's all it me means. Now, what does clean eating eat mean? Well, that's a very subjective term. A lot of people have different... Um, definitions of that but generally it means food that's clean and free of like uh, preservatives additives and being processed so clean eating would be let's say I want to eat a I don't know a bacon cheeseburger or something and instead of buying like processed white bread I make my own bread or I use Ezekiel bread that's healthier doesn't have all the chemicals so it's basically eating regular food but instead of buying the, the forms that are highly processed maybe you make it yourself or you buy something that's a lot healthier version of it that's all it means to be clean 
Now, another thing to keep track of in terms of clean eating is eating out. Eating out is probably going to be one of your biggest pitfalls. Um, eating out is really bad for you in general. So restaurants want to make sure that you're coming back. They want to make sure that they stimulate you. So what's stimulating? Fats, sugar, and salt. So when you eat out, foods are not typically going to be high in fat, sugar, and salt. And those are the th three things that you mostly want to avoid. <laughs> those are the things that kill you, give you cancer, make you age, give you erectile dysfunction, cause a lot of health problems. So I know my friend Michelle, she used to go out almost daily to buy food. I would call her at night and she'd be in a drive through getting a burger or getting, you know, fried chicken or whatever it was. She was getting pizza, etc. So if you really want to eat healthy, you really kind of have to not eat out very much. I don't eat out very much. I go to restaurants maybe every couple weeks and there's very few places I'll go to. And I try to eat food that is not high in fat sugar and salt and when i say fats i mean vegetable oils vegetable oils are basically poison for humans vegetable oils would include canola oil soybean oil vegetable oil pretty much all those processed oils are very bad for you they cause cancer obesity brain damage i mean i can go on and on i have a video about vegetable oils but you want to keep it simple now what type of oil do you use well if you're cooking at home and you're making a salad or something like that, use olive oil. But don't cook it. Or that denatures the olive oil and it makes it toxic. If you're going to cook, keep it simple. Just coconut oil. Coconut oil for all your cooking, baking, whatever it might be. And then for your raw foods, use MCT oil, which is a form of coconut oil, or olive oil. That's the quick and dirty recommendations on oil. And I have more details on it in my oil video if you want to watch that. Question number 12. Now, how to shop for vegetarians? Now, this is a question I got from Tatiana in Colombia because she mentioned that there aren't a lot of options over there. And Michelle was asking me the same stuff. What do I, what do I buy? Do I start buying more pastas? You know, do I buy like soy products? You know, again, the general rules apply here. You want to eat whole foods. Whole foods. Whole foods means real apples, real bell peppers, carrots, potatoes. I mean, just buy food that hasn't been chopped up and put in some kind of a can or a box or something. That's what a whole food is. And then eat whatever it is you want. Make vegetable soups, make lasagna, make meatball soup with, you know, plant-based uh, meat. Eat whatever it is you normally eat, but just try to use whole foods. You don't need to buy processed foods to eat a vegetarian or a healthy food, uh, healthy lifestyle. Again, processed foods are not good for you. The only reason why I eat some of these veggie meats is because sometimes I get a craving and I know those are the lesser of two evils. They're healthier than eating the actual meat. Now, are pastas good for you? No. Those are processed and they have a high glycemic index. It's like eating white bread. If you really want to eat pasta, I buy pasta sometimes. I buy the one that's made of like chickpeas or lentils with high in protein and it doesn't have a high glycemic index. So it's much healthier for you. So yes, you can eat pastas, but not the regular pasta, the semolina wheat one. That's processed and that's again, it's almost like eating compacted white bread. So I don't recommend pasta at all. It's going to cause cancer. It's going to cause obesity. It's going to cause a lot of health problems. So you want to avoid that. Now, do you want to eat soy products? Yes, yeah, soy products are fine. But, you know, you could just eat regular soybeans or regular tofu, which is just fermented soybeans without a lot of processing. Now, again, if you feel the craving, then yeah, you can buy uh, processed soy products that are made into meats. But again, those are alternatives to eating regular meat because they're going to be much healthier. But they're not the ideal. Again, whole foods, beans, seeds, whole soy soybeans are much healthy. Question number 13, should I buy organic or not? Well, I have a video on organics, but the quick and dirty is, it depends on your budget. If you don't have a lot of money, then buy whatever you can afford. I buy vegetables and fruits at the 99 cent store, which here in the United States is probably the cheapest place. And a lot of times they have organic, so I just buy the organic. But if they don't have organic, I still buy it anyway. I just wash it. A lot of the pesticides can be washed off and remember, just because it says organic doesn't mean it doesn't have pesticides. It means that a lot of times they have pesticides that are derived from organic sources like uh, lemon peels or orange peels and stuff like that. 
so those should also be rinsed. But my favorite is to get fruits or vegetables from my garden that have dirt on them or from the farmer's market. Why? Because dirt is excellent for humans. We need dirt in our diet. Eating dirt is what we get B vitamins from. The fact that we wash everything so much has actually caused us damage because now we're not getting that steady stream of B vitamins that we need. And that's why during World War II, the government started enriching and adding B vitamins to things. That's why if you look at your pasta or your cereal, it'll say enriched whole grains or enriched pasta products. The reason why is because B vitamins are super cheap, but if we don't have them, they have a lot of health consequences, negative health consequences. So the government just started adding it in. And a quick note about rice, a lot of people wash rice. Don't wash your rice, because rice is almost always fortified. Um, a lot of times people will wash the rice and they'll tell me, doctor, there's like this white powder that comes out, this milky stuff. That's not bad. That's actually the B vitamins or powdered vitamins that are added in. So if you're washing your rice, you're throwing away all your vitamins. So don't wash it. Unless you're growing it in a field and you're getting it out of the fields yourself, then yeah, you should wash it. But even still, a little dirt is okay in there. Question number 14. Can I lose weight as I age? Will a vegetarian diet help me lose weight? Yes, it will. And yes, you can lose weight. It is true that as we age, sometimes we get thicker, we gain more weight. That's because most people have a problem adapting. Remember, people like routines. They like to eat in routines. They like to eat the same foods. That's not good for your health. Again, as I was talking earlier about shopping, don't fall into food routines. When you go into the market, try to buy completely different stuff every time you go. Every time I go to the market, that's why I like the 99 cent store, they kind of sell leftovers from other big markets. So I buy random stuff. I don't go in there with the list. I don't know what I'm going to eat. They might have carrots and bok choy this week. Next week they'll have cilantro and spearmint or whatever else they have. Whatever it is, I buy it and I eat it. That variety is excellent for humans. You think of yourself as almost like a car that has thousands of car parts. You need so many different types of nutrients. You don't want to wake up every morning and have a kale shake and a bowl of oatmeal every morning like a robot. That's super boring and it's not actually the best thing for your health. Now obviously if you have a problem with losing weight and it's good for you to be in a routine for a short period of time, that's fine. But a lot of times I find that patients get bored eating the same thing and then they start venturing into eating Cheetos and drinking Coca-Cola. So to prevent boredom, just stay within a range. Like I always eat healthy foods, but I don't eat the same stuff. I'm always eating different things. Even the veggie burgers I buy, there's dozens of different types now. I buy whatever's on special or on clearance. That's what I eat. And one key thing to keep in mind that as you age, you wanna keep track of your biological load, okay? So as you age, your body gets weaker. It's normal. It's harder for you to be resilient and bounce back from stuff. Like I said earlier, when you were young, you can go out and drink all night and then just go to school in the morning. No problem. Now, that would be a problem. <laughs> well, for me anyway. So I don't do that. So as you age, you have to change your habits. You have to drink less or not drink at all. If you wanna stay younger, you wanna not get cancer, you wanna stay thin, sorry, you gotta cut out how many things you used to do. You can't go to Tommy's and eat chili burgers and chili fries anymore like you used to. You just have to cut out some of those things. It doesn't mean you have to lose pl pleasure. You have to just learn new habits and substitute out. I get a lot of joy out of eating bowls of mixed berries mixed with uh, whipped cream. I love whipped cream. I put nuts and stuff in there. I mean, that's like a really healthy meal and I really like it. I like it better than eating a ding dong or a I don't know, or some kind of Otis Bunkelmeyer muffin or something. That stuff, it kind of grosses me out when I look at it now. So now I really prefer to eat this other stuff and it's full of antioxidants, um, things gonna help me lose weight, help my brain function better. You get the idea, you just wanna make sure that you're eating healthier things. Don't fall into a routine. Try to eat a variety of foods. That way you're not nutritionally deficient in certain things. Make sure that you're always mixing it up. If you like almonds, okay, that's cool. 
This week get pistachios. Next week get walnuts or get all of them and eat different amounts, you know, different nuts on different days, different beans. I don't like to eat the same thing every day just like anybody else does, so I don't. I eat lentils, I eat split pea soup, I eat refried beans, I eat regular pinto beans, I eat my dad's beans because I love his beans, he makes them like ranch style. I eat kidney beans, I eat lima beans, you know, garbanzo beans, I can go on and on. I just mix it up, I don't eat the same stuff. That's boring, nobody wants to be boring or eat boring. <laughs> and in doing all that, by eating less meat, eating less alcohol, taking less pills, you're gonna provide less biological load for your body. Now remember, as you get older, you wanna make it easy on your body by decreasing your biological load. Now what is that? You wanna decrease the amount of work your body has to do. So if you're going out and you're drinking, that's gonna cost a lot of work, right? It does a lot of damage to your body, causes a lot of inflammation. If you like to drink, that's cool. Just decrease the amount and maybe the frequency of the drinking. That's gonna slow down your aging, prevent uh, cancer, and decrease mental decline. Same things for pharmaceuticals. On average, Americans take about seven pharmaceuticals a day, seven pills. You know, they get a headache, they take something. You know, they feel a little swelling, they take something. Try to allow your body to resolve some of these issues on its own. A lot of my friends will, will get frustrated with me because they're like, dude, I got this problem, I got that. And I tell them, just go drink some water, you know, do this, rest, go for some walks. And they're like, that's not what I want to hear. What pills do I take? No, nothing is like that, especially pharmaceuticals. They might solve one problem, but they'll cause you two or three problems. They cause exponential problems. So you want to avoid taking stuff like that because it causes more work for your body. That's called biological load. The more load you put on your body, think of like carrying a heavy backpack, the more work you're gonna have to do. You don't want that. Make it easy on your body, give it less load. Give it food that's easy to digest, like a nice big salad instead of a cheeseburger or fries. That's gonna wear you out. That's why when you eat it, you get tired. You feel like you have a food coma. There's a reason for that. <laughs> it's not really healthy. And it takes all the resources from your body and makes it go into breaking down that alcohol or breaking down that marijuana or breaking down that cheeseburger. And all that energy is not getting diverted to keeping your skin nice and supple, keeping your weight down, keeping you healthy, doing healing, fighting cancer. You understand? So your body has kind of like limited resources. You want them to be diverted towards things that are healing instead of trying to metastasize alcohol or drugs or pharmaceuticals, which are not good for you, unless they're necessary. Question number 15, and this is the final one now. Michelle asks, well, what are the benefits? What have you noticed in your life? Well, me personally, and from what I've seen over the last 20 years with patients, the benefits are enormous. I was about, I'll share with you this, this is kind of personal. <laughs> because most of my friends are in their 40s and they're having erectile dysfunction. And when I see patients, a lot of people in their 30s and late 20s are having erectile dysfunction. And that's because of limited blood flow, right? What's gonna cause that? Well, you're not eating a healthy diet, you're not gonna have good circulation. People that eat more fruits and vegetables have higher blood flow to their body, more oxygenation in their body. Watch the movie Game Changers. They have a really good explanation about that and they're from a famous scientist uh, doctor it's on the video but in general I'll tell you I was about 30 years old before I became that's when I became vegetarian I was already starting to see performance issues in myself in terms of having an erection and there wasn't much I could do at that time they didn't have you know Viagra and all these different things that people use now and I just thought oh man that sucks I'm going downhill and I'm only like 30 years old well I became vegetarian and that's one of the things I noticed that changed immediately. I'm 46 and when I have a partner, I'm able to have sex every single day with no problems. You know, I'm not forcing it. I'm not taking Viagra or Cialis or taking any of this other stuff. I just don't need it. And again, those things do harm to your body. They're not for free. So remember, there's long term consequence. I see patients they have problems with their vision, their blood pressure, all sorts of stuff from taking Cialis or, or Viagra and stuff like that. So there's going to be consequences if you take that. 
Eating vegetables is an easy solution. And I have a video on helping with ED. If you're curious, you can watch that. Now, some of the other benefits, well, I used to sleep eight or nine hours a day. Now I sleep four to six hours a day. Sometimes when I'm traveling, I sleep as little as two hours a day. I don't use an alarm. I just don't need the extra sleep. My body's strong, I'm healthy. I feel like it's made me a lot more successful because I have more time. I'm up more, I'm a lot more productive. I feel better, my mind is clear. And I'll tell you an interesting story I had with an insurance company. I had this situation about 10 years ago and I just had it recently in the last few months where I had a life insurance policy and it was for millions of dollars. So obviously they want to make sure you're not buying the policy because you have cancer or something you're going to kill over. So the insurance company sent uh, a nurse out to check my blood and do all kinds of tests on me. She left and then I got a call from the insurance company saying, hey, we need to do additional testing. So they sent the doctor out to my house. He took all the blood tests, did all the tests on me. And of course he had to send everything back to the lab. And then I asked why they had to do a secondary. And he told me because everything that we took on you was really good. It was off the charts. And we wanted to make sure it wasn't a mistake. So after I got the results from the doctor's examinations, I went over with my insurance agent. And he confided in me. He said, dude, I've been selling insurance for 27 years. And I've never seen anybody with the types of health markers that you have. You're not only in the top 1%. You're in the top 0.1%. And I thought, wow, that's really cool. That's the sort of thing I hear when I get my physicals every year. But of course, I exercise regularly. I eat healthy. I don't take any drugs. I don't drink alcohol. And that makes a big, that has a big impact on my health in general. But again, I'm in the 0.1%. And of course, my parents have a lot to do with that because they, they raised me and they fed me well and they take good care of me. And I keep my stress levels down but there are a lot of benefits to it. So those are some of the benefits that you can expect to reap from becoming vegetarian or from changing your lifestyle. And again, you don't have to be a full on vegetarian. You can be a flexitarian. You can try some of these meatless Monday or meatless Tuesday, whatever works for you, you can try that. You can just try reducing the biological load for your body, making it work less. Think about the drugs you take that you don't need. Think about your alcohol consumption, your food consumption, and again, the big three, salt, fat, and sugars. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, please comment below. And from Los Angeles, California, this is Dr. Ernesto Martinez. Thank you for watching and goodbye.